colleagues. Welcome to the College of Science and Engineering and our orientation session. Thank you, Rachel. Um, if this is not your flight, you now have the chance to, right? No, all scientists here. Oh, great. I was afraid there would be some lawyers or something. Um, so my name is Ingo Köper and I have the pleasure to entertain you for the next 30 minutes or so, where we basically give you a brief introduction, set you up for success, give you a little bit of information how to make your next week, weeks, months, years, decades, the rest of your life more pleasurable. Um, before we do that, I would like to acknowledge that this is Ghana land, so we are meeting on Ghana land and we are very respectful to all the elders past, present and future. Flinders actually has multiple campuses across multiple different lands and we acknowledge all their traditional heritage and on it. So, um, this is what we're going to do over the next, as I said, 25, 30 minutes or so. We'll give you an official welcome to the college and then we'll give you some tips and tricks for success. We'll have somebody from the admin side to say a few words. We'll have some academics say something. We'll, you will have the chance to ask a few students the questions because this is where you bet, get the best information. What do we know about life at, on campus? We'll ask the students. Um, after that, we'll have a little bit of fun on in your specific disciplines and there are even some prizes to be won, good ones. Um, so for the official welcome, I will hand over to the Associate Dean Learning and Teaching of the college. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> so right, I, I live to, to different personalities today here. Um, it's great to see so many people here. I feel a bit like Taylor Swift. I'm not going to sing, that's a good thing. Um, so I'm the Associate Dean Learning and Teaching, so I'm looking after all we're delivering in science and engineering, which is everything from animal behavior to physics, engineering, computer science, GIS, chemistry, math, and, and everything in between. Um, so welcome. It's Great that you're here. You definitely chose the right university. Right? The university that is not going to change while you're studying. It's not going to become a mammoth thing. Um, well done. Um, you definitely are on the right campus. This campus is much nicer. Um, we have a lake. We have ducks. Um, we have plenty of ducks. Um, there's no distraction of shopping while you're studying, so it's also a good thing. Um, now, the important thing to learn about this campus is this side of the lake is the good side. So all the sciences on this side, right? there's biology, there's chemistry, physics, earth science is a bit further up. The other side is where the others are. Um, you will need to go to the other side a few times because the library is there. If you need a library, there's some food options over there. However, if you want a good coffee, you don't have to go over there. We have a very good coffee um, place here on Anchor Court, and I highly recommend. Say hello to Tom, who is running this, and uh, he will treat you well. So welcome to um, Flinders. You are now part of the College of Science and Engineering, the best college in the university, um, so you definitely made the right choice. So I, we didn't want to overburden you with too much information, so we keep this nice and short, um, and we've limited to the essential bits that we think will really set you up for success for, well, to get a good start, right? When, when classes start next week, um, and beyond that as well. So we will start with um, our student admin services in course enrollment and whatever. There are the people, there are great people. So 
Aaron and Jackie can tell you everything you need to know about courses and what to do and where to go. And if you struggling with enrollments and other things. Hi. Yes. So? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Ingo, for the introduction. My name is Aaron. Um, I am part of a team uh, here that uh, will help you through your degree. Um, if you've got any questions about what topics you need to take along the way, um, me and my team are the people to ask. We've uh, got Jackie Cavey, um, who's just down here in front. Uh, Jackie and I are both based at here at Bedford Park, um, just in Anger Court, just across from the wonderful coffee that Ingo mentioned. Um, so you can find us in there. Um, and we've got uh, course advice sessions that we run um, every week, today, which I'll get to. Uh, we've also got um, one of our colleagues, Tash Jansen, who's based over at Tonsley. If you're ever over at Tonsley, you might see her from time to time. Um, it's a little bit more come up to the front counter and uh, request to have a chat um, over there. It's a little bit more free flowing. Um, so I'll just get to some of the points that are just up here. Um, it's a little bit of admin housekeeping, um, but it is good to know. Um, getting used to the Flinders website and the jargon that is um, is part of all that is very handy and will help you with your studies. Um, handbook will be referred to a lot um, as you go through. Actually, a lot of things will be referred to a lot, um, but handbook in particular has all of your course information. So all of your topics, uh, all the prerequisites, anti-requisites, like I said, jargon that gets thrown around. Um, it's good to have a look through there, um, but we've also got a little summary sheet called a study plan, which will get referred to from time to time as well. Because you're all starting first year, you'll all start off with the same study plan, essentially, unless you've got some prior learning that we've, um, we've given you credit for. Um, it's handy to get used to those, so please feel free to take photos of, of this or memorise where to uh, where to find um, this sort of stuff. Anything that doesn't fit into a course um, course rules, study plan, anything like that, we've got Ask Flinders, which is basically a catch-all for um, any questions you may have. So whether it's something like registering in classes, timetable clashes, or just where do I find something on campus, that gets triaged through to various teams. Um, anything to do with timetable and class registration comes to the collective team that I'm in, I guess, um, and anything to do with your study plan and course rule will probably get answered by Jackie or myself. So feel free to log those. It does take a little bit of time to get through because there are a lot of students. We've got quite a few students here and more that couldn't attend today. So please be patient with us. We will get to it. Um, one of the things that I will say, international students in the room, um, it's critical that you enrol correctly uh, to finish on time and in line with your confirmation of enrolment understand what that means and generally to everybody it's important to enroll correctly and finish on time so if you do have any questions please feel free to ask us um, we don't want you to choose your own adventure we do want you to to finish as you um have set out to um so the drop-in and enrollment advice sessions uh every weekday at bedford park from 11 30 until 1 feel free to come in um have a chat with us and anything that we can um, try and help you with, we will. Thanks very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? So how long does it roughly take if I lodge an Ask Flinders request? How long is a piece of string? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> we generally try to get it get to it within a couple of days if we can, but during busy periods, it can take up to a week or so. So if you um, if it is something quite pressing, um, please put urgent in the um, in the description um, or come in and see us. Um, is probably a better move. For I that think way we can... coming coming and seeing you, right? They can't run away if you're there. No, we uh, can't. That's right. Yeah. Ask yep. them then and there. <laughs> Good. And the same goes for people that are online. Um, they can also. So we have a few people actually online joining. Hello. Can you give a wave? Hello. Um, <laughs> so yes, if you're online and you're actually not physically here, you can still submit ask for this request. And um, and I would say there are also your course coordinators that you can ask other academics ask for help this is true we often have to refer on to um your course coordinators as well if it becomes a tricky question so feel yeah. free to ask please ask you will actually thank you aaron thank you you'll actually see throughout the next 20 minutes ask for help is a recurring theme 
Um, so talking about ask for help, we have some student and well-being advisors that are here to help you with a whole variety of things. So if it's not courses or topics specific, what can your team offer? Thank you, Ingo. I have my cheat sheet here. I'm not quite as good as everyone else. Uh, my name is Michaela. I'm a student success and wellbeing advisor specifically for this College of Science and Engineering. Uh, my colleague Mel is also here today. She covers some of the other colleges. So today I want to quickly highlight the importance of student success and wellbeing here at Flinders. It's more than just your academic achievements. It's also taking care of your mental and physical wellbeing, as well as addressing personal circumstances that might arise along your journey. So we are dedicated advisors who are here to assist students facing challenges. We want to help students get their studies back on track, identify and achieve your goals and navigate the university system. Flinders offers a range of services to support students on their journey, from learning support to doctors to counsellors. There's disability advisors. We've got FUSA, our student association, where you can access financial counsellors, academic advocates, and a huge range of clubs. There's also the Oasis Wellbeing Centre, who organise events and programs dedicated to enhancing wellbeing. So their aim is to create a sense of community for students. Whether you need academic guidance or personal assistance, Flinders has you covered. So to book in with us, uh, you can just search success and wellbeing on the Flinders website and book directly in with us. Otherwise, your teacher might refer you if they feel like it's necessary. Um, additionally, in week three, we run the Flinders Support Network SMS. So basically, that's a text message that goes to all students asking how you are, checking in on your wellbeing and offering assistance if you need it. And um, yeah, that's Chris, us. Thank, thank you. you. Any questions? No. Do I have to pay? Free service. Good. So Included in your other payments. <laughs> I, I think it's very important to, we, we are looking after ourselves, that you look after yourselves. And yes, studying hard is good, but you should also have fun and survive. Good. Thank you. So talking about studying, so let's see from an academic point of view, what would we use or what you should maybe do to really succeed to get you started. So I have two of my colleagues, two teaching program directors, um, Jean Yang and Sue Pike, who will say a few words. Um, you, if you, you will probably see one or both in your first semester um, or first year. And well, I'll hand over to you. And you have one slide with a um, few things. So, um, as Inga pointed out, I'm a teaching program director. Um, my job, I focus on what's called natural sciences, which are um, organismal biology courses, animal behavior, marine biology, biodiversity and conservation, GIS, environmental science, paleontology, um, and lots of associated master's courses. And so I focus on helping Ingo with his role by getting the most out, trying to get the most out of my teaching staff to support themselves and you through your learning. Um, I think it's really important for you to recognize your, your education at university as a journey. Um, it's part of your life story and really connect yourself to it and be engaged because that's how you know when you need help and that's how we can best provide you help. So making sure you're connecting with your topics, with your topic coordinators and with the people in your class because connection is one of the most important um, criteria for success at university because when you're connected, you feel confident and you are engaging with other people with others. And that is so important as part of your learning journey. Okay, I'm Sue and I look after physical and molecular sciences, which is basically the sciences that Jean doesn't look after. Um, I'm not going to rattle them all off for you. Um, and which you one is do... better? <laughs> <laughs> it depends who you talk to. Um, if you are doing first year chemistry, 
you will see me in the first few weeks. Um, and what I want to add to what Jean said is you've done the best thing you could have done for your time at Flinders by showing up today. Please make sure you talk to at least one person you didn't know today, learn their name, find out what course they're in. When we split into course groups later, you should be able to find someone that you will probably see in your classes next week. And that makes the whole journey um, much easier for you guys. You've already got a head start on those that aren't here today. Um, the more you come to class, the more you engage with what we ask you to do and the materials we provide, the easier it will be and the more you will feel like you belong. And that's a real key to success at uni. So do come to everything, everything that we offer. We don't offer things because we love to stand down the front and talk to you. We offer things because we think they're of benefit to you. So you will have some things to watch online. Um, you may even have some tutorials that are run online, but you will have lots of things that are face to face as well in science. Um, things like labs are compulsory, so you do have to make sure you find a way to get to them. But we really look forward to getting to know you. It's exciting to have this lecture theatre full today. And good luck with everything. And if you're doing chemistry and you have a question about which topic you should be doing, I'll be around. So catch me later. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now, Sue said, talk to somebody you don't know. Let's do that. Let's spend three minutes and talk to your neighbor. Introduce yourself, get to know each other. <laughs> and if you're online, use the chat. No. No. Okay. That worked. Great. Um good. So I always rem I remember my old week when I went to university. That is a long time ago, but I got to know some people and it was so helpful to then come in the first week, come into the first lecture and say, I've seen you before. I can sit next to you. It's not so scary anymore. Um so I said early on, um we can tell you 
a lot of things that we think are good, but these people know much more. So we have three students here that are studying with us. And don't hide, come, come, come. Um, so I'll give you each 30 seconds to introduce yourself, to say who you are, what you are studying, and one essential tip, and then we'll open up for questions. Well, my name is Connor. I'm third year forensic science doing the biological stream. Uh, and one tip that I always enjoy is fun place to study, place that we can sit and study and not have any real distractions on campus. Hi, I'm Charlie. I'm doing biodiversity and conservation and maths. And my main tip would be to do your best not to burn out. Your mental health is worth more than your grades. Hi, my name is Clancy. I'm starting my third year in biodiversity and conservation as well. Um, my tip would be to write everything down. Um, if you're coming straight from high school, you're probably used to teachers reminding you of things. I was too, and I forgot so many things. Any little task, no matter how small, write it down somewhere. Good, good. So, do we have any questions? I will bribe you if you ask a question. Oh, here, you, you get a duck. <laughs> so, what's your question? And I'll repeat the question. So, one thing you would have done when you were starting that you didn't do. So, what is something that you started that you didn't do before, or something <laughs> that was not the question? No. <laughs> so it was That's... one thing that you wish you would have done when ah. you started training. Yes. Okay. Um, if you were, if you were to start again, if you would be in their shoes. Yeah. Um, kind of a similar one to what I was saying before, but a mistake that I made was not having my notifications on for Flow, um, and I missed the first, like the first online test of the semester. Um, so I felt really bad about that. But um, just turn your notifications on. Make sure you've always got things like that. So setting up, if you've got a weekly test every Tuesday at two, put something reoccurring in your calendar. Um, Cause again, stuff is so easy to forget. Do we know what flow is? No. What is flow? I think it's canvas now. No, it's flow. Is it still flow? It's flow. Oh. The Flinder, flow, <laughs> flow stands for oh. Flinders Learning Online, which is our online learning platform. You would have had something in high school probably beforehand. Um, I know my son, they're using Sector. Um, there are others. So we have a system as well where there are, what, what do you find on Flow? Everything. Yes, on Flow, you'll find your lecture notes, your assignments, your materials, discussion forums, and all the other things. Other questions? You want a duck, right? You both get a duck. I have multiple ducks. Okay, what are your questions? Which I have just learned is the same thing. So yes, so Canvas is essentially the software behind Flow. We call it Flow, but it's running in Canvas. But it's it's the same thing. Sure, you only get one duck though. What is like your motivation to to continue? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Um, I would say being passionate about what you're doing, and if you're finding that you're just not enjoying what you're learning and you're questioning why you're here, maybe you should reflect and see if there's any way you can reignite that or if it's time for a different path. But yeah, I would say I'm really being passionate about what I'm studying. Like I love wildlife. I love the, all the conservation sort of stuff. So that's what really keeps me going. So who would you talk to if you feel, this is really not for me? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, there's free counseling on campus. So if it's, you know, a real life reflection kind of thing, I believe you get seven free sessions a year. Um, so, you can go to that. There's also the student supports through like FUSA as well. Yeah. And I would there. say if it's an academic question, mm. right, talk to some academics yes. and yeah. we might. Uh, yeah. Right? yeah, just yeah. your course coordinators always want to help as best they can. Um, so talking to them, they can help if you need to get redirected um, okay. or anything. Else? Another question. You'll, you'll get one. Pick the best one. 
<laughs> okay, forensic question. So it's really just trying all the different things. So trying the chemistry, trying the biology, trying, I think you do a bit of computer forensics in first year. It's really just trying to see what you like and then just thinking about what you want to do, really. Yeah. Do we need to decide what we're going to do in the third year and fourth year? No, no, no. no. Just start and uh, don't stress too much what might come um, your way. Uh, why do I have Because I like ducks. <laughs> <laughs> You also get a duck. Ugh. Okay, and what's <laughs> good? How do you find which electives to uh, pick? So the course has changed. It changed midway through me going through, um, but I was trying to pick things that had really good applications to the real world. Um, so GIS is one. Um, it's a little bit tough. I found it a little bit tough, but really useful. So that's like the computer program, um, not programming, um, like mapping and things like that. So linking as best you can with things you want to do in the real world. Um, so, you know, if you're really interested in the more land side of it, you can do kind of more geology electives. Um, and yeah, just have a, for all of you, for all your courses, have a look through the full course um, explanation. So you'll see what electives you can pick, where, what your options are, um, and just have a bit of a pre-plan um, just to figure out, you know, what's interesting, what skills you can build from there. And talk to these people if in what what you can do and what you can't do. Um, that's you'll also meet a lot of marine bio and animal behaviour students, and you can often do their topics as your electives. So you can sort of chat to the people you meet in labs and see what they're doing and like get their recommendations. So if you're also interested in marine or whatever, find out what the best classes are for those and you can take those as your electives. Good. We have a question way up here. Oh, we would love this question. So some topics, some topics will have lots of assessments, some will have little. What do you think? Good, everybody has a different opinion. There is a split decision up here. I'd say, because um, forensics specifically, it's a lot less assessments, a lot more learning. And I learn better doing stuff, which is more just learning with your hands on and not having as many assessments. I would say if I have assessments, I do not learn anything because I'm just trying to get them done and I'm not really taking the time to actually like think and absorb it. I learn the most in labs, which are sometimes assessed and sometimes not assessed. So, yeah, personally, I do not learn much when I have a lot of assessments because I just get overwhelmed and don't think. I love a good assessment. Um, I think um, as someone who is getting better at self-motivating but isn't fully there yet, an assessment I find always, you know, you have to do it, you have to learn it anyway. Um, and I find that a really good kind of reminder of when to revise. So I've had classes where, you know, you just have the lectures, but there's no follow up test. And I've had other classes where every two weeks there's a test. And I find that that's a really great mandatory revision because you have to revise it for the test. Um, so, yeah, for sure, you get. <laughs> um, so like these guys are saying you do heaps of learning in labs which is also great and it's really great if you can have that self-motivated learning um, but I find assessments are a great way to be yeah. told that you have there's, to there's not one correct we, we try to scaffold a bit in your first year you probably have more assessments because we want to help you in later years you have fewer assessments but they become bigger so it's, uh, we try to help you Prioritize time management. How do you do that? So um, I always look at the biggest assessments first and see when they are due and when is the earliest I can start working on it. When's the earliest I have the knowledge to start working on that and start planning it out? That's 
what I do. Uh, I, do, you, do you have a calendar? Do you have a notepad? Do you have a diary? I do have a journal that I write all of my stuff in. It is all nice and snazzy with a nice leather cover that I carry with me everywhere. And it has everything from my first year all the way up until this year, pretty much. Good. Now, if not, we have another question here. Would it be better to um, contact them through email or like after class? Like after you just... how, how do you get in touch with these big, scary people? Uh, I do both personally. I email them first and then follow up in a tutorial or after a lab or after a lecture. Because they're really they are they are people. They are good to talk to. They are not always scary people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to us. Feel free. Okay, we might grab one more question. Oh. Lectures. So the question is really about lectures and online in person. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So this depends on your degree. Um. Some things they are offered in person. Um. Sometimes they're online. As it's kind of, I'm cheating a bit because I live on campus, so I'm right here to get to lectures. Um. But if you can make it, I totally recommend going in person. Um. You gain so much more. You can answer the questions. It's a lot harder to tune out, which I find can be easy to do with online lectures if it's just a video. Um, so yeah, whenever possible, go in person. Yeah, everybody agrees? Or... I, I would add to one thing. You need to be much more disciplined if you don't come to lectures, because you have to go and watch them actually, which I personally would find really hard to motivate myself and watch that. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> and even if you don't pay full attention, I think in the lecture theater, there's probably some osmosis happening that something gets stuck. Yes, OK. Good. You will see these people throughout the day, so there's plenty of more time to ask. Um, whenever you see a yellow shirt, ask them questions. and. Um, but thank you. Do you also want to get a duck? <laughs> get get a duck. <laughs> See, everybody likes ducks. Um, okay, so this brings us really almost to the end of this session. Um, I have summarized a few things that we haven't mentioned here. So get on flow. Get look what's happening in your topics. Um, ping is a student newsletter that you will get into your email, which means you have to read your emails. Um, Flinders is on various social media. There's something on Instagram. There's something on Facebook. I believe there's a TikTok channel as well. Um, there's one thing that I, nobody has said yet. We forgot that. There is an overheard at Flinders group on Facebook, which is quite good. You just can just join and people ask these questions. People ask the question about which elective to take every time. So that's a good place to go. Um, there are clubs around and you will actually get to see our club today. The student is a science club So join them, make friends. Um, and if you need help, ask for help. Ask for help early. It's nothing bad asking for help. We here are really to help you. We want to use to succeed. If you ask help when it's way too late, it makes it much harder to get you back on track. Um, so this was it from me. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll break you in small groups, and I'll tell you in a minute in which groups. Um, we'll do this outside where you registered. There will be signs. Um, then you'll hear from your course coordinators. You'll go on a little treasure hunt and come back here at 12, which is in about an hour, to claim some prizes. And then there's lunch at the plaza. So for these discipline-specific information sessions, we've grouped a few together. So if you are 
in animal behavior, biodiversity, conservation, or a master of science biology, there's one group. I mean, you can read it. Um, so these are the different science outside. If you are studying a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts and Science, you probably have one major. So maybe go to the group that corresponds most with your major. If you don't know where to go, ask us and we'll direct you in the right direction. Good. Thanks for coming and enjoy the rest of your day and of this week and of this month and of this year. And for those that were online, thank you very much for joining. This is it for you, unfortunately.